Hi everyone, please excuse my voice, I'm a little bit sick at the moment. In the previous video I redrew some of my old digital drawings to see my progress, but the thing is, I've only been drawing digitally since 2020, so the drawings I chose weren't that old. However, I have most of my previous sketchbooks here that go back all the way to 2018, and I decided to pick a page from each of them to redraw and kind of reflect on my art journey, I guess. By the way, I have a playlist with all my sketchbook tours if you want to see them. <clears throat> but first, I said it in the other video, but I'll say it again. I will be criticizing my old drawings, but please don't take anything I say personally. I'm only critiquing myself. Anyway, here's the first sketch I will be redrawing. It's not for my first sketchbook, to be honest, it was just really bland and I couldn't choose something to redraw. This one at least has something to it. Next drawing is this one. It's actually not that bad, but again, the sketchbook isn't that interesting. This has something to it, at least. And the third drawing I chose is this one. I don't know what that is. This one isn't horrible either, but I just want to do it too. And I'm actually gonna combine these three into one page with full coloring and it's gonna be awesome. So starting with the bruh sketch. I did a sketch off camera. Sorry, I didn't feel like setting up the camera for this. The original sketch is from October 2018, which is kind of crazy. It was my K-pop era, I guess. I was really into BTS and I almost exclusively drew portraits of the members. This one is V. Uh, I was able to find the exact reference I used from the idol music video. The music video is super colorful, so I'm doing a lot of bright colors, which the original drawing really lacks in. In 2018, I only drew sketches, maybe adding some blushing from time to time. I am using acrylic markers from Ardex. I've been using them pretty much all the time since I got them. They're awesome. The original sketch it doesn't really look like V. It's very blurry as well. I think I focused more on recreating every little shadow from the reference rather than the placement of the features and stuff. I would always make the eyes too small, the jaws too wide, and just in general I wasn't super confident in what I was doing. Now my lines are way less scratchy, I'm better at mapping out and stylizing the features, and my realistic drawings are actually more simple, which I think makes them look better. I'm not doing hyperrealism, so I don't need to replicate every little shadow. I also like to incorporate some elements from my stylized drawings into realistic ones, like the two bottom eyelashes, lines around the eyes, lips, ears, and stuff like that, just so it's kind of recognizable, I guess. I sometimes get questions about how I capture people's likenesses, but it's kind of hard to explain in words. Maybe I'll do a video on it someday, I don't know. But back to the drawing, doing the line art was kind of scary. I do have a set of pens from Ardex as well, and some of them are very thin, so I would be able to really get into it and do a lot of little details. But I wanted to do colorful line art because it looks nice, so I'm doing it slowly and carefully with one of the markers. And I like how this turned out, it took less than 15 minutes to do, and it looks so, so much better than the old drawing. Then I moved on to the next drawing. This one is from May 2019. It's supposed to be one of my very old OCs, but I used a picture of V as a reference. So I kind of started branching out from only drawing BTS members to drawing my OCs but they were still heavily inspired by BTS members. I couldn't find the exact reference I used, but I'm still referencing V to keep it authentic. Um, I don't remember much about the UC though. I think his name is Cole, and he was inspired by the TikTok e-boy style, if that wasn't obvious. The split hair, the stripes, and the checkered patterns. I do like the color scheme though. I actually still use it a lot black, white, and red for accents. If it's not broken, don't fix it. The coloring on this one was more simple and messy. It was honestly because I was getting impatient, but it fits the vibe. 
Also, my black markers are drying out a little bit. I'm gonna be real because of how much I use them. <laughs> I don't really have much else to say about this one, to be honest. This OC didn't have much of a personality, so nothing to say about that. Maybe at some point in the future I could revisit my old OCs because I had a lot of them and that they could use some a lot of work. The original drawing was from when I kind of started, like I said, branching out from just drawing BTS members to drawing like my own characters. But it also started becoming more simple and more stylized. At some point I remember I even learned how to draw Suga and J-Hope without references. And I was really proud of that. I also try to do like different compositions and stuff, doing backgrounds. I had this thing where I would make a use with the BTS members, nothing weird, um, but just like, you know, what if they worked at a coffee shop or something like that and I would draw them like working at a coffee shop. It, it's, it sounds so weird like talking about it now. <laughs> I didn't choose any of those pages to redraw though because, I don't know, didn't feel like it, I guess. But yeah, that's about it for this drawing. The last drawing for this page is this one from February 2020. It's Jin from BTS. Yeah. At this point I drew a lot of my OCs, anime characters and stuff, but I chose this one because the idea is nice and the other pages from the sketchbook didn't really speak to me. I don't know. I like the coloring style I had. It's not something I would do now, but it's pretty neat. It looks kind of like Jin. The placement of the features is a little off, but it's definitely better at this point. I couldn't find the exact reference for this one as well, so I just picked whatever came up on Pinterest. So the hair will be different, but it's whatever. The color scheme is simple on this one as well. Again, black, white, and an accent color, this time yellow. If you haven't noticed, all the drawings so far have been in realistic style. I drew only realistically for a very long time and I had this mindset that if you want to be a good artist, you should know how to do realism. Years later, I disagree with this. Don't get me wrong, it is a useful skill to have, but I don't think it's a requirement. If you want to draw cartoony, stylized characters, just go for it. A lot of people say that you need to learn proper anatomy before getting into stylized art. But I don't think so. I think I had this opinion because a friend of mine at that time was going to art school and she drew in realism, so in my head, taking my art more seriously meant realism, I guess. Which is pretty dumb. One style isn't better than the other. It all just depends on your opinions, preferences, and goals. I like to do realistic, more stylized, and little guy styles now. Sometimes realism works better for the mood of the piece, other times I just want to do something more stylized, and other times I just want to do a stupid look doodle of myself to express my emotions. What can I say? Anyway, I haven't really been talking about the drawing, but there's not much to say that I haven't said earlier, to be honest. It's pretty simple, didn't take too long, I like how it looks, I like it much better than the old drawing. Yay! Okay, moving on to my more colorful and interesting sketchbooks. Okay, I don't know where I put this specific sketchbook, but um, I chose this page. Not to flatter myself too much, but in that sketchbook there were a lot of cool ideas and it was kind of hard to choose one, but I just had to choose this page. It's Sundrop from FNAF Security Breach. His arms and face can move. And I still really like that page, honestly, and the Moondrop one as well, but I'm just gonna do this one today. Um, there's no date on there, but Instagram tells me I drew it in December 2021. So I started by sketching out all the pieces off-camera again. Actually, in this video all the sketches were done off-camera. Sorry. I'm drawing all body parts as separate pieces, 
and I'm actually making the legs move this time as well. There's more than enough room for that in my current sketchbook, so why not? I'm changing Sandrop's design a little bit as well, not too much, just adding some bells, patterns and stuff. On the old drawing I was trying really hard to replicate the official design, but I'm pretty sure there weren't many references for it since the game was relatively new. But it's fun to change up the design a little bit, because why not? I'm doing colorful line art again, but here I wasn't as precise. I'm also not really doing any shading. On the old drawing I tried shading everything with my sketching pencil, and I don't really like that look anymore. The new one looks friendlier, I think. I honestly do not remember how and why I started making my sketchbooks really colorful and more like scrapbooks, really. Almost everything was glued in, I didn't draw directly in the sketchbook that often, and there always had to be something that moves. It's cool though, I still like them despite the art style be being outdated. I just don't know how I had the patience to do all that. Now I join the sketchbook way more and only do interactive pages like this every once in a while. Sometimes I do feel kind of insecure that I'm not pumping out these crazy ideas as much anymore, but like who cares? It's a sketchbook, not a freaking pop-up book. I also want to say that it's totally fine to have a sketchbook that's not colorful and crazy. I do sometimes get comments like, my sketchbook is so boring compared to yours, and I don't want anyone to feel like this is the only good way to fill a sketchbook. It's always so hard for me to word it. <laughs> I just don't, don't put yourself down, please. One isn't better than the other, they're just different. I know I would eat up my old friend's sketchbooks that were just filled with messy sketches back in the day. It doesn't matter how full or empty the sketchbook is, it's always fun to see the artist's thought process, ideas and everything. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just coloring all the pieces. Moving on. I cut them all out and here begins the fun part. So in one of my videos I showed how I do these kind of puppets, but I found another cool and easy method. The original idea is from this person, just to be clear. All you need is literally just paper, scissors, glue and the thing you want to spin. I'm using leftover paper I had from cutting out the pieces. I cut out two circles, one significantly bigger than the other. I cut out a little circle in the middle of the big circle, trace that on the smaller circle, then make four cuts into it, leaving the center circle. That's a lot of circles. <laughs> Then I fold up two of the flaps and put them through the center of the big circle. Instead of the big circle, you can just do the thing you want to spin. For example, the star I did here. You're not gonna see the hole anyway, but for sun drop I need the mask to be whole, so I'm doing the extra circle. I apply glue around the edge of the big circle, making sure it doesn't prevent the flaps from spinning, and glue it to the back of the mask. Then later, when gluing the face to the page, I apply glue to the rest of the small circle in the back. And that's that for that. I repeated this on the legs, but instead of doing the extra circle, I just used the leg pieces. You're not gonna see the, these parts anyway. I really like this method because it gives good movement. I hope my explanation makes sense, but also check out the person that came up with it. They have a lot of other cool interactive stuff for sketchbooks. For the arms, I will use my usual method because the arms are simply too small for the circles. You'll need the same materials but also a needle and thread. First I take two pieces of paper, still using the leftovers, I poke two holes in them with a needle. Don't poke them too close or too far from each other so the joint can move but doesn't just rip immediately. I did about 2 millimeters. Then I stitch the pieces together, I did two stitches. Make sure they can move and tie the thread, then I cut around it, making sure the size matches the arm. After that, I apply some glue on one side and stick it to the back of the arm, make sure it can still move, and that's about it. The one I did on camera was messy as hell, but I swear the rest of the joints are cleaner. But yeah, I repeat that for the rest of the joints, but I also glue the elbow and wrist ones to the arm. 
This method gives limited movement, unfortunately. If I could, I would have used the circle one for all of it. But oh well. You can also use... I think they're called paper fasteners. They work, they work really well for this too, but I can't find them in my area. And I keep forgetting to order them online, so I have to find different solutions. And now I'm doing the actual page. Once originally I used like paper back paper, but I couldn't find any, so I'm just using cardboard in a similar color. I do like the decorations on the original page, but I'm not replicating it here. I have a lot of little decorations that fit perfectly with the character, and I need to use them. So when gluing the character down, I had to be strategic with where I put the glue, so I don't mess up the movement. It was very fun though, kind of felt like a middle school art project. I like doing something like this from time to time. After the glue dries, I start going crazy with the decorations. I'm using stickers, buttons, foam stickers, band-aids, tape, googly eyes of course, and doing some doodles. I do it kind of randomly, just filling the empty spaces until I felt like it was enough. I get all this stuff at my local craft or dollar stores. I rarely order stuff online. I also like to save pretty papers and stuff. I really do like how this page turned out. I love all the different textures, colors, the moving parts. It's really a huge benefit of traditional art for me. I like both digital and traditional, but man, combining different mediums and being able to physically see and feel them is awesome. And the last page I chose is from this sketchbook. It was kind of hard to choose just one page here too, but mostly because I did a lot of studies in this one. I will be redoing this specific sketch I did around August 2023. I still like it, I just want to make it into a full page, that's all. Okay, so this is based on the movie Possession. I haven't actually watched it yet, but I've seen a few videos about it. I'm bad at watching movies. Anyway, I'm changing the composition and doing a big face. I actually have been really enjoying drawing faces at this scale. Sometimes I even find it easier than little doodles. I am keeping the gut background though, just making it way less sketchy. I actually have a tutorial, sort of, on this kind of background, but there I used alcohol markers. This background works really well for horror-themed pieces, I think. I'm also doing a limited color scheme again, and I try not to overdo it on the face. I feel like I sometimes really do too much coloring on the face. It doesn't look bad, it's just kind of a messy process. The background coloring is more simplified. First, I filled in the black parts to not get lost in the sketch. On the sausages, I filled them with red, scribbled some dark orange in the center, then scribble some lighter orange in the center of that. Outline each sausage with a dark red-ish brown. And add some highlights with white. Sounds more complicated than it is, but I mean, you can see what I'm doing. I do it in small areas at a time to, again, not get lost in the sketch. Actually, the background is the most complicated part of this page. The rest is even more simplified. I did some shading on the face, and the rest is just outlined or filled with black. That's another thing I like doing. If the character has, let's say, black hair, I just fill it with black, no shading, no nothing. I'm pretty sure it's a thing in character design, like having some areas where you can rest your eyes or something like that. I just think it looks nice, and it saves me time, so... I am also using the same red on her lips, another thing I do a lot. I already mentioned that I still like the original drawing, but I mean it's not even that old. And I'm still pretty pleased with that sketchbook. I did a lot of studies in there, finished it pretty fast. It was fun, and I was able to combine simple and more complicated pages, which is cool. You can watch the tour on my channel. <clears throat> this page was actually the first one I did. It took me a little over 40 minutes to do, 
mostly because, like I mentioned, my black markers are drying out a little bit from using them so much. But I managed, and this page is one of my favorites now. I don't hate the old drawing, it was just a little sketch, but it looks so cool as a fully colored big page. Like, I just love it. I also think the new one resembles the reference a little better, the emotion is more accurate. This isn't about the drawing, but I just want to talk about this sketchbook. So I started it like two months ago, and I'm only almost halfway done with it. So I was thinking, what if once I fill it halfway, I make a tour of that. And then once I fill the rest, I will do a part two, as well as a flip through of the whole thing. Because I don't want to go too long without a sketchbook tour. It will also allow me to talk more about the pages without making the video two hours long. <laughs> uh, I'm probably gonna do it either way, honestly, but still let me know what you think about that. I'm really happy with these. Actually, there are a few more pages I chose to redraw, but I felt like it would be too much for one video, so I will make another video like this with my other sketchbooks. It might not be right after this, but at some point. Yeah. So here's the first page. Very nice. I love how this turned out. And I added some star stickers here to kind of tie it together a little bit. Here's Jin. And here's the OC. Yeah. And this one. Oh my goodness. I love it. I need to sit down and actually watch this movie. And the last but not least is this bad boy. Ignore that this is empty. Oh, I'll get there later. But this is so cool. Only thing I'm worried about is uh, the legs getting like wrinkled over time because of the gems underneath. I should not have done that. I really should not have done that. I'll glue it down. I'll glue it down. Whatever. Uh, this is awkward. Yeah, other than this, um, this is really awesome. I really like how this turned out. Ah! Don't embarrass me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's all for this video. Expect a part two at some point. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, all that. Check out my other socials on the screen and description. Stay safe and bye!